Christian Fellowship online service. You know, this is the right place to be, the presence of God. You know, he's a magnificent, marvelous God, and it's an absolute privilege and great joy to come to his presence and worship him. You know, this morning, I was reminded of two verses in the book of Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, and I'd like to read it to you from the Passion Translation. It goes like this. For in him was created the universe of things, both in the heavenly realm and on the earth, all that is seen and all that is unseen, every seat of power, realm of government, principality and authority, all exists through him and for his purpose. He existed before anything was made and now everything finds completion in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything, every one of us finds completion in this our God, our Jesus Christ. You know, it's beautiful, inspiring to think that God, this God who created this overwhelmingly beautiful and marvelous universe has created you and me in his own wonderful image. And he created us for a purpose and no man and nothing can stop that purpose and destiny being fulfilled in our lives. I don't know about you during this COVID situation, I've had a number of questions and anxieties and in every time I've gone to the word of God and sought him in prayer either on my own or with my family and the wonderful family and see a family through our prayer sessions. I have found the peace and the answers I need, you know, because God promises us his peace. We could go looking for so many things in this world, thinking that they might give us hope or satisfaction or joy or happiness. But I can tell you that finding Jesus as our Christ and Savior is the only supreme thing and gives us completeness and joy. You know, as we worship him this morning, let us remember that the first thing that God said when he created this whole world was, let there be light. You know, I pray that this morning, the light, Jesus, the light of the world, will shine in every dark place in our lives, into every lack, into every question, into every problem, and help us understand and get closer to this beautiful God of ours. Amen. Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful morning. Lord, we thank you that you took time to create us, Lord. You spoke the words to the universe, but Lord, you took time and effort, Lord, to create man in your own image, women in your own image. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you're mindful of us. And this morning, Lord, we come to you because we know, Lord, we can only find completeness and satisfaction when we seek you and when we are in your presence. Father, we pray this morning for anybody who's got questions, who's maybe gone far away from you, Lord, to just draw close this morning so they can find the peace, the joy, the completeness, Lord, that only you can provide. We pray for many of our brothers and sisters across the world who may be going through difficult times, that Lord, Father, that your grace and your peace will fill their lives, Lord. Thank you for being our light. Thank you for being our savior. Thank you for being our father and friend. Thank you, Jesus, for always being there for us. 
We love you. We bless you. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you and enjoy the rest of the service. Amen. of 
gone Regardless of the things I've done Oh, my hope is found in perfect love Your mercy They say that it's impossible to ever save a sinner's soul. But my God says to the prodigal, my beloved one, you're welcome home. Jesus, I surrender All to Him I freely give I will ever love and trust In His presence daily Oh, all to Jesus I surrender
everyone hope you all had a fabulous week for our events this week we have daily prayer meetings happening from monday to saturday on zoom at 6 p.m and 9 p.m we have bible studies happening within your respective care cell groups there is young women's bible study happening every tuesday at 9 p.m Alpha course also runs through the week. It is an informal gathering where we answer questions about life and Christian faith. J1 youth meetings happens on Thursday at 6 p.m. And there's also prayer meetings uh, for J1 at 6 p.m. on Fridays. For our Sunday school meetings, P1 to P7 meets on Saturday, Radiant Rays meets on Sunday, and Ignite also meets during the week. For them, the date and time will be posted on their WhatsApp group. Next Sunday um, is a special Sunday um, where on our for our 11 a.m. service, we have Prophet Raja Prabhakaran sharing from the Word of God. He will also be joining us for a live prayer meeting from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock through Zoom. All the details will be posted on the WhatsApp group, so please do join us. We also, we will also be organizing for the first time a senior school career advice event. It's for any senior uh, student looking for advice on their careers um, or looking for a mentor in making their decision. I'm sure it will be of great help for you. Um, and anyone who's looking to be an inspiration for our students or would like to help uh, in this initiative, please do contact Sister Anita. Um, if you would like to support our ministry, please do visit our website, nlcfscotland.co.uk slash giving. Um, if you would like to give your offerings or tithes through bank transfer, uh, the details are again posted on the NLC of WhatsApp group. For any additional details or you would like to join us for any of these meetings, please do visit our um, Facebook website or our Instagram or even our NLCF website and you can contact us uh, through the contact form over there. Hope you wish you all a blessed service and God bless. Good morning. Today's message is taken from the book of John chapter 9, from verse 1 to verse 7. I repeat, John chapter 9, from verse 1 to verse 7. Now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man or his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back, saying, 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to our Father. Let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your indwelling and infilling presence. We thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for the ministry of your word in our lives. Thank you for the ministry also of the Holy Spirit. He is our counselor. He is our advocate. He is our strengthener. He is our helper, our intercessor, our standby. Thank you, Father. He is also the one who teaches us your word. Holy Spirit, open the eyes of our understanding. Flood our hearts with your light so that we may understand the message. We thank you for your powerful ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we yield ourselves now to you and let your will be done in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen, Amen. The title of today's message is Your destiny is to display the divine virtues and perfections. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Miracles are called signs in the gospel of John. And there are seven of them in this gospel. The first one being the sign which was performed at the wedding in Cana. And the last one is this story, the portion which we have just read and over which today's message will revolve. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, it is written, performed many signs in the presence of his disciples. But not all those signs were written in this gospel of John. The seven ones that have been recorded in this gospel, they were recorded with the purpose of bringing us into faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, faith into the Messiah, and by believing in the Messiah, we might have received eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Four main points arrested my attention while I was preparing this message, while I was fellowshipping with the Lord Jesus Christ through this portion of the Gospel of John. Number one, Jesus sees a man born blind. Number two, the disciples ask a theological question. Number three, Jesus provides an explanation. Number four, Jesus acts revealing thereby the work of God, which is in this case the healing of 
the man who was born blind. And now, hallelujah, let's steep deep into this uh, narrative. Let's start with the point number one. Jesus sees a man born blind. Jesus is the word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was God. And this is so according to John in chapter one. Jesus is the son of God. Meaning actually that he is God in flesh. All things, according to John chapter 1 verse 3, were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. The way Jesus sees us, the way Jesus sees things is different from the way how we see them. We see in a limited manner. We only see what is in existence in the present time. The future of someone, the destiny of someone is barred from our sight. Most of us see only appearances. We do not see through them so that we can discern the purpose of God in someone's life. Even when we are armed with the best intentions, a man without spiritual discernment or comprehension sees, judges, and advises people based on what is there in the present time. We look at someone and say he is just a carpenter or he is just a dishwasher. We look at a certain young man, all we see about him is his shortcomings, his difficulties, and we look at a certain young girl, all we see about her is based on, uh, on her clothes, on externalities. We cannot know who this person, who this young man, who this young girl can be, can become one day. Only the creator, his or her creator, knows the purpose of his people, of this child, of this young girl, or this young man here on earth. God is a God of purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I do believe that when the parents of the blind man looked or were looking at their son, they didn't see that he was really a reward from God. He was a heavy burden to them in many ways. 
They saw no future for their blind child. And they suddenly asked themselves questions. around the causes of this congenit congenital. Number two, the disciples ask a theological question. In verse two, the disciples asked, who is to blame for this tragedy? The blind man or his parents? They knew, the disciples knew from the Hebrew scriptures, precisely from Moses, who wrote in Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 9 and in Exodus 34 verse 7, that God will visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. So they needed, the disciples needed more light in this issue. And the Lord Jesus didn't disappoint them. And let us go quickly to number three, which is Jesus provides an explanation. In verse three and four, he said that he must do the works of him who sent him while it was day. The night was coming when no one could work. These words were spoken at a time when the Lord Jesus' ministry was coming to its end. The night, which is Jesus' absence, or the absence of the light of the world, was not far away. In verse 5, he added that he was the light of the world. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Only a lunatic or the true savior of the world himself could ever have said such a thing. In John 8, verse 12, the master said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Whoever follows me shall never, shall not walk, walk in darkness, but will have, shall have the light of life. My brother, my sister, as a new creation, you and I are destined to display divine virtues and perfection. According to Second Peter, chapter 1 and 4, we have been given by his divine power, meaning by Jesus, who is the wisdom and the power of God. We have been given all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him, our God, who has called us to virtue and glory. Without the light of the world, without Jesus Christ, the light that cannot be extinguished, we cannot do the works of the Father. The Holy Spirit, the enabler, came into our lives with his enabling dynamic ability because of Jesus Christ. And to be precise, because we believe in Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear what the Son of God, who is himself God in flesh, said in John chapter 12, verse 46, I think. I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. My brother, my sister, let these words get into your heart. Admit this light into your heart. And even better, let this light, the light, the word of God find permanent residence in your heart and I guarantee you will not abide in darkness in the realm where you will suffer from satanic harassment where you will be under the power of sin death, sickness and disease no, no, no this is not your portion. This will not be your portion. Psalm 84 verse 11 says, The Lord is his son, S-U-N, and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he uphold from those who walk uprightly. We see therefore that just as the sun, S-U-N, is vital to the physical world, so is the light that came from above. Jesus is foundational to our lives. Lord Jesus, I need you. Lord Jesus, our communities need you. Lord Jesus, our families need you. Lord Jesus, our cities, our nations need you. Salvation is in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says there is no other name given under heaven by which and through which we can be saved. By which through which a man or a woman can be saved. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. There is freedom from satanic Harassment in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Number four. Jesus acts revealing thereby the work of God. Which is in this case the healing of the man born blind. Let's read again uh, verses six and seven. When he said, when he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back saying, Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the evil one. According to 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. Hear my brother, hear my sister. The Son of God, the liberating King, who is himself God in flesh, 
heals all kinds of disease. He can heal you of any bodily or spiritual disorder or problem. He can and wants to heal you of COVID-19. Oh yes, he can and wants to heal you of spiritual blindness too. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And his grace is continually sufficient for you. I want to repeat it again. His grace is continually sufficient for you and me. Seize, my brother, seize, my sister, this moment and become more receptive. Receive now the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Be set free now. Be healed now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And to conclude, let me say this. While the people who are passing by so just a blind man and a hopeless case. The Lord Jesus saw an opportunity to reveal the greatness of our Father and to cause this story, the story of the blind man, to become a life story which will inspire many people throughout the ages and a life story which would bring people into living faith in the Messiah, the liberating King. Glory to God. Let me share also with you something from Acts chapter 9 verse 32. At chapter 9, from verse 32 to verse 35. Hallelujah. Now it came to pass, as Peter went through all parts of the country, that he also came down to the saints who dwelt at Lida. There he found a certain man named Aeneas who had been bedridden eight years and was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus the Christ heals you. Arise and make your bed. Then he arose immediately. So all who lived, who dwelt in Lida, and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Turn to the Lord, my brother. Turn to the Lord, my sister. The Lord Jesus Christ, the liberating King, can and want to perform a sign. Signs, miracles for you. Through me, through us, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 We are the body of Christ. Members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father, for this message. Let's pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for these words. We thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. And right now, I affirm that your grace is now flowing 
and is mightily at work in our lives. In this instant, in this moment, your Holy Spirit is working powerfully in our lives, liberating us from anything that causes pains or prevents us to progress in life. Thank you, Father, for healings that are taking place right now and will continue to take place in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you. Let the Spirit that healed the blind man in Jerusalem let the spirit that caused Aeneas to become sound again, let this spirit be now in action in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your unfailing love. We give you all the praise, all the glory. In the name of Jesus. Thank you all for your attention. And may God continue to bless you. In all departments of your lives. Goodbye. Thank you Pastor Rosario for sharing a powerful word. We praise God for the Holy Spirit that has ministered us this morning through you. And we praise God for you and Sister Fatima for keeping us a blessing to us in the ministry. As we approach the communion service, I want to read a couple of verses and lead you into the communion service. I want to read from the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and read verse 11 and 12. The scripture goes like this. So Christ has now become the high priest over all the good things that have come. He has entered that perfect great sanctuary in heaven, not made by human hands and not part of this created world. Once for all, he took blood into that most holy place, but not the blood of goats and calves. He took his own blood. And with it, he secured our salvation forever. When God delivered the Israelites from their slavery into Egypt, the Lord had more, even greater things in his mind. God not only had the intention of liberating the Israelites from the bondage, the Lord also wanted them, wanted to lead the Israelites into the promised land that he has established for them and he also wanted that their lifestyle would demonstrate to the neighboring people that the Israelites were specially and specifically set apart for God. And the scripture says in Exodus, God did not waste any time as he was leading them in the wilderness. He gave them tabernacles when you read Exodus 25, when you read verse 8 and 9. The scripture goes like this. It says, I want the people of Israel, Israel to remember me a sacred residence where I can live among them. You must make this tabernacle and it's furnishing exactly according to the plans I will show you. You know, perhaps when the tabernacle was created, the Lord gave exactly how it has to be done. He instructed Moses and he gave them. But when you look at it, perhaps it might look it's a bit too much extravagant and unnecessary. But the tabernacle specifically designed to model spiritual principles that the Lord wanted the Israelites to, you know, to hold on. And the tabernacle the scripture says was divided into two sections and these sections were separated by a thick curtain. 
and the only high priest could enter only once in a year. And the Bible also says the reason why that only once in a year is because he didn't want, you know, entering the holy place to be something, you know, entering in a very casual way because sins of people was an offensive to God. And the Bible says that, you know, when you look into the scripture, this whole tabernacle, it prefigured the wonderful work of Jesus Christ on the cross. You know, God didn't want us to take it for granted. And, you know, but the Bible says Jesus was, you know, he died, he was broken, he was literally pierced. And, but the Bible says, although he died, he was crucified. The scripture says he rose again. He won the sin and the death. He conquered. When you read Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12, the scripture says that in so doing, he went behind the curtain into the holiest place and secured our salvation forever. Earlier, the, you know, the high priest could enter only once in a year. The reason is holiness was so important when entering in the presence of God. But Jesus, when he died, the scripture says that the curtain was split into two. And this Hebrews 9 says that Jesus' blood secured a salvation forever. And verse 14 says, only Jesus could offer himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sin. Friends, you know, the curtain that was, you know, literally, drew, you know, was split. It, it tells us and invites every one of us to enter into the presence of God. God is no longer hidden and remote for the children. Once men that was estranged by God because of their sins, now we can enjoy the intimacy with Jesus through this great sacrifice he did. Hallelujah. What a privilege we have. Whatever situation you might be facing through, whatever grave sin it might be, the Bible says, he has given us that if we repent and ask the Lord to forgive our sins, He's a God who forgives our sin and heals our body and He heals our nation. Let's approach the communion as the scripture says, remember whenever you come together, the great sacrifice. Let's take this bread and the wine, remembering the body of Jesus and the blood that was sacrificed for you and I. A Father God in heaven, we want to thank you for this beautiful time you've given us to remember the great sacrifice, Lord, that was offered for our sins, iniquities, for our sickness through your Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Gracious Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, the way your relentless love chases us, O Father. Lord, we want to thank you we pray that, Father, that in every part of our life, your resurrected power will be manifested, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord, Father, that your grace, your mercy is sufficient for us, O oh Lord. And as your word says, Lord, if anybody confesses your, our sins, you're a God who forgives and, Lord, heals the body and also heals the nation. We pray in the name of Jesus that last Lord, your children are participating, remembering the great sacrifice that you did for us. Let your resurrected power, your healing power, your Lord, your deliverance move into every walk of our life, Lord. Straighten every crooked path. Smoothen every rough surfaces in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, that as your children are participating, let Lord, your new grace, your new anointing, your new mercy be stirred up in the lives of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You 
it is ethical and the Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. For you, you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we Friends, can I ask you to rise and can, I, can we lift our hands and receive the benediction? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace, new mercies, new favor and healing in every part of your life now and forevermore until my Jesus comes and the people of God said Amen, Amen. See you next Sunday. God bless you.